guys welcome to another video now i know a lot of you are sick of me saying guys but guys it is a habit that i can't get over now guys i hope you're well and i hope you've been having a nice good time with the past few weeks doing whatever you've been doing now in today's video we're going to be talking about punctuation things that are not words we're going to be talking about symbols and why am i making a video about punctuation Guys, I've made a video about language devices, about vocabulary. I've made a video about structural devices. Punctuation is the fourth and final piece of the jigsaw that is what makes a good piece of writing. Every exam board expects language devices, structural devices, vocabulary. We've been over all three. The final aspect that as an English student you must use is punctuation. Now, full stops and commas just don't cut it. You should be able to confidently and correctly use full stops and commas. In this video, I'm going to go over six other pieces of punctuation that I encourage you to use in your writing. Some of them are very straightforward. Some of them are a little bit more complex, but they are not difficult to learn. Now, guys, you have to, you have to, you have to get in the habit of using these six. Now guys, before I switch over and begin talking you through these pieces of punctuation, if you are interested guys in any of the classes I offer, please do head to guys www.everythingeducation.co.uk and you will find lots of information guys where I have English classes that are taught by myself. We do maths classes, science classes. So please do feel free to join when you are ready. All right guys, let's now begin talking over how we use pieces of punctuation. So the six pieces of punctuation that I would like you all to learn are on the board. Now let's begin from the top. We begin guys with an exclamation mark, which is a line with a dot beneath it. Now the common misconception is that exclamation marks are used for shouting. Guys, they're not just used for shouting. Exclamation marks are used to express emotion. This could be happiness, this could be anger, and this could be sadness. But it shows an emphasis. That's the purpose of an exclamation mark. It shows emphasis and it shows emotion. So rather than just always using exclamation marks to show anger, guys, switch it up. If you want to emphasize something in your writing, if you want to show a bit of emotion in your writing, then simply use an exclamation mark. Number two, guys, is a question mark. The answer is in the name. Every time you answer, you answer, every time you ask a question in a piece of writing, you must end it with a question mark, not a full stop, not a comma, nothing else, but you end it with a question mark. Now, guys, my biggest issue with this is you forget. So many students are so used to using full stops that they simply forget to use question marks. So guys, for this one is a reminder, because if you forget to use an exclamation mark, you won't get marked down for it. But if you forget to use a question mark after a question, then you will be marked down for it because you've made a mistake. Number three, guys, let's go over colon. Now guys, I remember clearly when I was in year nine, my English teacher, right? When she taught us these two pieces of punctuation, oh my days, she made it out to be so complicated. She spent like two lessons teaching us how to use. I remember clearly, guys, because I remember her words. I remember her saying that it will take you years to learn this. And when I became a teacher, I always wanted to change that. Nothing should take years to learn. It may take years to master, but nothing should take you years to learn how to use. Guys, this and this takes you two minutes to learn. Let's go over colon. A colon is a dot and a dot put together. How do we use a colon? We use a colon to replace the word because. Now, some people say you can use a colon before a small list of three, and that's correct. But guys, how often are you using lists in your writing? I can guarantee that we are all using the word because more than we are using lists in our writing. So, <coughs> so guys, for a colon, you simply remove the word because and you put in the two dots. Now, I beg you, don't use a colon. 
sorry, don't replace every single because with the colon. Once per paragraph. Once every other paragraph is more than enough. Now let me give you an example. I was so angry because I burnt my food. I was so angry. Remove because, put in the two dots, put in the colon. I was so angry, colon, I burnt my food. Done and dusted. You use a colon to replace the word because. Then we move on to semicolon. This is supposed to be a tough one, guys. This is supposed to be a language device. Sorry, this is supposed to be a piece of punctuation that you guys are not supposed to understand. It's like voodoo. It's like magic. It's too hard to grasp. That's very simply. Very, very simply. Now, there's many ways of doing it. There's many ways, but I will give you the easiest, simplest, bulletproof way so you can take it and use it in your writing. One of the ways of using a semicolon is for a long list. So a colon, this one here, is for a list up to three. Anything more is a semicolon. But let's forget lists because I keep saying we don't usually use lists in our writing. But what do we do and what do we use a lot of? We use a lot of the word because, hence why we replace a colon. However, guys, for a semicolon, can you begin replacing the word and with a semicolon? Now, I beg you again, do not start replacing every single and, but begin replacing and with a semicolon. The purpose of a semicolon is to connect two clauses. So, for example, I went to the shops and I purchased some eggs and some milk and some bread. You take out the and. I went to the shops, semicolon, I purchased some eggs, some milk and some bread. Done and dusted. Guys, colon is because and is for semicolon. Now, we move on to brackets. Or some people quite call them parentheses. I just stick to brackets. Now guys, brackets are used traditionally for extra information. It was a cold day, brackets November. Brackets, guys, is used for extra information. But what's the purpose? Guys, normally brackets make the writing more personal. You almost let the reader know what your character is thinking, for example. If I said, Mr. Everything English was wearing a blue jumper that said everything education on it, brackets, ugh. I'd never seen something so hideous. Close brackets. The writing out of the brackets simply states facts. The writing in the brackets states how you feel. It reveals your innermost thoughts. So guys, brackets can be used for extra information, but it can also be used to make the writing personal. And last but not least, let's go for ellipsis. Do you know how many of you guys end your stories using ellipsis? Cliffhanger, 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 cliffhanger. Dot, 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 dot. Guys, ellipsis is used, I would say, there's two main ways. The first way is to connect two points together. The first way, guys, is to connect two points together. So, for example, let's say you had a very big quote and you wanted the beginning of the quote and you wanted the ending of the quote and you want to delete the part in the middle. You will give me the beginning of the quote, then you put dot, 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 which covers the part that you deleted, and then you give me the ending of the quote. The purpose of the ellipsis is to connect the beginning and the end of the quote, and it saves you copying it all down into your books. That's number one. Number two is to show a change in time or in day or in setting. Three years later, dot, dot, dot is an example of how you might use an ellipsis. And last but not least, guys, yes, you can use ellipsis to indicate like a cliffhanger, to indicate suspense, where you leave the reader thinking. It leaves the reader in a trail of thought, hence the three dots. And guys, that's really it. There's nothing more to it. Commas and full stops plus these six pieces of punctuation is what you have to learn to use. Now, guys, my request here isn't learn how to learn what they mean because I've just taught you what they mean. My request is get in the habit of using them. Make the conscious effort that in my piece of writing, I will use a colon. I will use a semicolon because, guys, it is so important. It is so important. 
every exam board will expect this, especially those of you who are climbing for those grade eights and grade nines. If you don't have this, you will fall because in the top band of every mark scheme for English, they ask for ambitious vocabulary, structural devices, language devices, and a range of punctuation. Hence why I am going over this. All right, guys, I will end this video here. As always, guys, thank you so much for your support, whether you've come here from YouTube itself, whether you've come here through Instagram, whether you've come here through TikTok, whether you're a student or whether you're a parent. Guys, I really do appreciate the support. It's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.